Welcome back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. All right, so I have been wanting to do this episode for a couple of weeks now, but every time I started to write it, more drama would come out, and so I wanted to at least let the dust settle a bit. So I feel like I'm hitting this a little later than a lot of people, but purely because I have been enjoying the ride. I've been living in the moment, my friends. I have been on the internet, basically shoving popcorn in my face, watching this all transpire, because there is some... There is some drama in Hollywood. Not that anybody is surprised, but this time it is even more entertaining than usual. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. But now it feels like, you know, everything is kind of calming down. The dust has settled. So I'm going to slide in here with my commentary. I might have to do a follow-up in a couple of weeks with how fast this is all moving. But at least I can get you know, myself out there. But before we get into it, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you've not already, ring that notification bell. And of course, if you've been following my videos for the last couple of weeks, you know that since today is September 12th, it is the last day to enter my giveaway. You can go to dailywire.com slash Brett. It is totally free to enter. You will be notified if you win because you will receive one of these very fun hand-signed one-of-a-kind Polaroids in the mail from me, and you will be able to be on a Zoom call with me, maybe even featured in a comment section episode. I'm not even sure yet, but I think It'll be super fun. I'm very excited to meet some of you guys. So go to dailywire.com slash Brett today because it is the last day. All right. I'm so excited. Let's get into this drama. So Olivia Wilde has a new movie coming out. It is called Don't Worry Darling, and it is starring Chris Pine, Harry Styles, and Florence Pugh. But it is not your average film. And I say this knowing basically nothing about the plot of the film or anything like that, but it is not your average film because of the chaos that has surrounded its production and its release. So let me just give you some backstory because I truly believe that this is the beef of the year. But you know, the beef that owns my heart is Good Ranchers. And Good Ranchers owns my heart because they have unbeatable quality. Their beef is pasture raised, prime or upper choice. Their chicken has no antibiotics or added hormones. It's also pasture raised. And their seafood is always caught fresh and then flash frozen to make sure that you get the highest quality possible. And on top of all of this, Good Ranchers has amazing values and they are staunch supporters of Daily Wire and our audiences, which is why I have an incredible deal for you guys. So if you want to check them out, go to goodranchers.com slash Cooper and use promo code Cooper at checkout for $30 off of your order plus free shipping. Again, promo code Cooper at checkout, $30 off and free shipping. You don't want to miss this because you should be cooking some steak while I tell you about this internet beef. It's only right. The film starts production in 2020. Shia LaBeouf and Florence Pugh were originally set to be in the lead roles. However, there was some tension before they even started shooting. This was in like the pre-production rehearsal period. There were a lot of rumors about why this happened, but to cut to the chase, Shia LaBeouf ends up leaving the film and Wilde says that she fired him. Shia LaBeouf has a lot of abuse allegations against him and people were saying maybe Florence didn't want to work with him. Maybe he needed to go to rehab that kind of stuff. Olivia Wilde then hires Harry Styles to replace Shia LaBeouf and star in the film because he happened to be not touring because it was COVID. And of course, Harry Styles is the, you know, One Direction, now huge mega pop star, but he's been dabbling in acting for the last couple of years. He had his first role in Dunkirk a few years ago and he's had a couple of other roles. But anyway, he's now starring in this film. Then... A couple months into production, Olivia Wilde breaks up with Jason Sudeikis, who she has been engaged to for seven years and has children with, and starts banging Harry Styles. Want to come over and bang it out? And then they start dating publicly. The world goes crazy. There's all of these videos of them, you know, making out at his concerts, all of this stuff. And then rumors come out the production is not going very well. And Florence and Olivia were apparently not getting along on set. Florence was not promoting the film. Olivia would post all of these overly sappy, you know, videos and pictures of Florence on film and Florence ignored all of them, was not responding to any of them. But we're not done because now the film has finished shooting. They're getting ready to release it. And this spring, Shia LaBeouf comes forward and says, hey, I want to clear my name. I was not actually fired. I chose to leave the film. And he apparently quit the film because Olivia was terrible to work with and wasn't giving him ample rehearsal time with Florence. He has the texts and the emails to prove it. And then... Last weekend, the Venice Film Festival happened, and it is where Don't Worry Darling was set to premiere. The drama and the tension was high. Olivia and Harry were avoiding each other at all costs because apparently they have now broken up. Florence only came to the red carpet and skipped all of the other press, even though she was in Venice hanging out, which is ironic because on one of the press conferences, Olivia Wilde was going, you know what? She's shooting this other film. She just can't be here. Meanwhile, Florence was literally posting pictures in Venice on vacation, drinking Aperol spritzes. Like, guys, we can see 
through it. Anyway, the internet has been going crazy for weeks now. I literally have an adrenaline rush explaining all of this because it has been so intense. But here are some of my favorite tweets. Somebody posts the uh, classic, it's always sunny in Philadelphia picture and says, okay, so Olivia Wilde presented herself as a feminist, but made her lead work with an abuser and then replaced him with her, I'm not an actor boyfriend that she cheated on her husband with and paid him more than Florence Pugh, starting a feud. Also, Chris Pine is there and got spit on. Also, yes, she did pay Harry Styles more than Florence Pugh. Apparently that caused problems. Apparently also Florence Pugh wanted an intimacy coordinator to work with Shia LaBeouf because of all of his issues and Olivia Wilde didn't want to give her that. Oh, and then, of course, I forgot this part. Uh, people thought that Harry Styles spit on Chris Pine at the Venice Film Festival. Here's the video. All right, here we go. Harry sits down. It's so fast, we got to see this again. Like, what, what is going on? And now, a lot of people have different stories about, you know, whether this actually happened or whether Chris Pine was just looking down and then picked up his sunglasses. And Chris Pine spoke to people and said, no, I didn't get spit on, that's ridiculous. But then Harry Styles opened up his concert after the Venice Film Festival and said this. It's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to be back in New York. I just popped very quickly to Venice to spit on Chris Pine. <laughs> So I don't know who to believe anymore. Like I am telling you guys, it is reality TV. I have been sitting on my phone watching this transpire on Reddit and Twitter and TikTok, and this is better than anything that E! could ever produce. But that was not my favorite Chris Pine, Harry Styles moment. Just watch this. This is from one of the interviews. The thing about the movie is like, it feels like a, like a movie. It feels like a real like, you know, go to the theater film movie that, you know, you, you kind of, the reason why you go to watch something on the big screen, I, I think. I am. I am. I am. Sofa King. Sofa, Sofa King. King. We Todd Ed. We Todd Ed. Ed. <laughs> like, Harry Styles has been listening to way too many Kamala speeches. All of her, we will beat COVID together because we are together as one beating COVID. And I do believe that we, in the future, together, we will beat COVID. What's the other one that she did about space and time? Like space between us all is truly just the space. I mean, they apparently have the same PR specialist. But my personal take after seeing all of this is that I think that all of these people have now just decided that they hate Olivia Wilde so much that they're just all trying to sabotage the film. Florence is not showing up. She's like, I do not care. Chris Pine is looking like he is high out of his mind the entire festival. Harry Styles is, you know, going on about the movie being a movie. It's just utter chaos. I don't think that they care. Or maybe Harry Styles is just a dud, which is another very valid option. Somebody posted, I need to be in Venice. I need to feel the tension in the air. Yeah, that was literally me all weekend. I don't know why Jeremy Boring did not send me to Venice. I gotta go take it up with him later. Somebody said, I can't believe Olivia Wilde's PR team killed the queen to try to hide the Rotten Tomato score. Don't worry, darling. Yeah, I will say... The death of Queen Elizabeth II really put a halt to all of this. It's kind of picked up now, but it was a good distraction from this chaos. Somebody said, the last time I followed a news event in real time this closely was Jan 6th. God, that's a nice part of the internet. Somebody said, what was going down on the set of Don't Worry Darling? Honestly, yes, I would love to know if Florence and Olivia had some kind of cat fight. Meanwhile, Chris Pine was just sitting in a chair by himself looking off in the distance and Harry Styles was like twerking on the side. And the last tweet I have, people brought the queen back into it. This person said, rest in peace, Queen Liz. You would have loved finding out the rest of the Harry Styles, Florence, Pew, Olivia Wilde drama. But I have seen many stories over the years of how Queen Elizabeth actually did really like the One Direction boys. And I think she's met them and she followed them. So... <laughs> Maybe in her final few weeks, she was scrolling on Twitter trying to keep up with the drama. And if you have been following this story religiously, like the Queen and I were, um, you probably know that there is one part that I have left out. And it is arguably the most important part, probably the part that is most relevant to my audience and all of us. So Chris Pine plays the villain in this film, and he is a crazy cult leader type guy. Olivia Wilde, after production ended, gave an interview and said this. This was just a couple of weeks ago. We based that character on this insane man, Jordan Peterson, who is this pseudo intellectual hero to the incel community. Wilde continued, this guy, Jordan Peterson, is somebody that legitimizes certain aspects of the incels movement because he's a former professor and he's an author and he wears a suit. So they feel like this is a real philosophy that should be taken seriously. So Olivia is saying that anybody who follows 
Jordan Peterson. So me, my team, Daily Wire, probably most of you guys, but we are all incels. If you are saying that you have clearly never heard him speak, you have probably heard sound bites from now this montages on Facebook that make him look crazy or right wing. No, all the man cares about is empowering people, uplifting them to live to their best potential, getting young men off of their couches out into the world to live fulfilling lives and contribute to society. If that is a crime, then we are truly doomed. Also, Olivia, are you saying that just because somebody is a published academic and a tenured professor means that maybe they aren't credible and shouldn't be totally listened to? Because I could definitely find some common ground and apply that logic to every crazy professor at left-wing universities. Now, obviously, I love Jordan Peterson. I think the man is brilliant. If you disagree with him, that's totally fine, and that's your prerogative, and that's your right. But to say that he is a pseudo-intellectual, to say that his entire community and his entire audience are incels, I mean, it is so obvious that you know nothing about him or anything that he teaches, and that everything you have learned about him probably comes from left-wing hit pieces from Vox and Vice and Teen Vogue. But I mean, there is a positive side to this, because Olivia Wilde would not be creating characters based on Jordan Peterson. Jennifer Lawrence would not be having nightmares about Tucker Carlson if they weren't afraid of us. It's afraid. It's afraid! Like we are living in their heads rent free. We're on their radar and that is incredible in the grand scheme of things. Like somebody said, Jordan Peterson isn't an incel god. His entire ideology is to help men be better men instead of blaming the world and women for their problems. Anyone who listened to even one clip of his would know Olivia Wilde is basing her villain on a version of JP she made up in her head. Yes, another person actually did bring Jennifer Lawrence into this and said, Olivia Wilde bases her movie villain on semi-conservative Jordan Peterson. Jennifer Lawrence has nightmares about Tucker Carlson. Hollywood is so scared and fragile. Maybe that's why they're such bullies. Yes, everything about them is fragile. They have this hold on all of these societal institutions, but that hold is getting weaker and weaker and they know it. I mean, basic psychology teaches us that when people are afraid, when they are feeling insecure, they lash out. Basic psychology. So what we are doing here is working. They would not be this vocal about us if they did not see us as a threat. I see that as a positive. Hey, 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 hey. I can't believe that you were about to click off of this video without liking it first. That was honestly rude. Be better.